Welcome to your Daily Five for Thursday, August 3rd, 2023. Lando and I have been playing the relatively recently released Dead Island 2 now for a little while. We were, after Lando's move, we were going to jump back into, we were looking for a different game, and we started playing a game called Divinity 2 Original Sin. Uh, but we started playing it, then we had to take a long break because of Lando's move, and it's not a game where you can just jump right into it, so we're going to probably get back to that one later. We wanted something more simple. And so we were looking at a few things, and I was curious about Dead Island 2 because I played Dead Island 1 and reviewed it. I looked it up 12 years ago. It was in 2011 that I did what I the five titled Dead Island, 2, Dead Island Final Review. So 12 years ago, I played that game. And I think at that time, I played it with my wife, uh, not with Lando. And we had a really good time with it. Now, Dead Island 2 has a, a very famously troubled production. You can go find a number of different videos on YouTube that go through the long history of what led to Dead Island 2. In fact, many people thought it would never come out. But I read reviews of it. And a lot of the reviews that I read, the things that they thought were negatives... I thought might actually be positives for Lando and I, because we were not, I knew this was not going to be a game we were going to be playing for the story, and we're not. Now, I think we're probably at maybe the 50% point, maybe a little bit short. We've been playing it for a while, but we're really just kind of wandering around, trashing things. I'm also not particularly good <laughs> at finding where things are, so we get lost a lot, because my map finding skills are absolutely abysmal, just like they are in real life. It doesn't change just because there's a video game, and it's... It doesn't lead you by the nose to everything, so you can get lost, and we do. So we've been going through it, and the basic setup, if you don't already know, is that in L.A. there was a zombie outbreak following the one that happened in Dead Island 1. It's continued and expanded, apparently, and so you are one of a set number of survivors that all have slightly different play characteristics. I think there's six choices kind of a two at the heavy level, two at the medium level, and two at the lightweight or kind of, you know, fast but not so strong or tough level. You pick those people, you customize them, you go through and you kill zombies. That's the whole game. It is largely based on melee combat, which is something Lando actually likes. Now, I typically don't. But again, Lando has just gone through a big move. He's, he's running into, the, you know, moving into a house and fixing problems, so he's been stressed out with that type of thing. And I thought, okay... I want a game that's something that's simple and lightweight, and, of, you know, I'm not opposed to melee combat, but I knew that it would suit his playstyle more, and the fact that I read a lot of people's complaints where the story isn't all that deep, I'm like, yeah, we don't really need a story. What, what I'd like to do is just go around and smash things, because I think that'll help Lando with the, you know, the stress of moving. And so far... It has. It's been a lot of fun. Now, there were there was a little bit of, I would say it has a slight learning curve, very slight, because it does have some peculiar systems that you have to kind of grapple with. But once you've got it down, once you've played it for maybe 30 to 45 minutes, you pretty much know what the game's about, and you can then proceed to go through the rest of it. And it's, it's a beautiful looking game. The locales are great. The fighting is pretty tight. I mean, we have no real complaints about the gameplay mechanics. I think it functions very well. There is, you know, the, the typical loot loop of, okay, I have this weapon, I customize it, now I find a weapon that's at a better level and I can replace it. Although I do like the fact that this has a the ability to level a weapon up, so if you really like the, the weapon you've got, you can actually bring it up to your level, which I think is something that more games should do. Where, you know, even in a game where there's all different weapons that drop and you can customize. I like the idea that you have a weapon that you're really comfortable with and you just bring it up to your level. You don't necessarily have to get rid of it. I think that's a huge plus. But overall, it is it is a lightweight game. The story is completely unimportant. If you're coming into this for a narrative, you're probably going to be let down. But the, the system that they've implemented for the zombies where you actually can tear the zombies from outer skin all the way down to skeleton is really interesting and neat. It's actually called Flesh, I think, is the name of the system, which stands for something. I won't go through it. But the combat is nice and tight. The sound design's good. Again, it has a gameplay loop that if you want this type of gameplay, you're going to get it. Again, reviews have dinged it for saying it's very repetitive, and that is true. But if it's a repetition you enjoy, and this is what I mean about the negatives that I saw being pointed out ended up being positives for us, it might be something, especially if you like the first one. If you like the first one, this is largely that, untransformed by 12 years of time. So that's what I think a lot of people are harping on, is, oh, it doesn't seem to have evolved. But that's what people liked about it. So if you like Dead Island 1, there's a strong chance you'll like Dead Island 2. We've been playing through it, and so far, like I said, lightweight, but for us, a lot of fun. So might be worth giving a try. Later.